Hello and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John. Thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Today's episode might be a little bit confusing. We're looking at the A74M, which runs from Abington down to Gretna and sits between the M74 and the M6. It's confusing because the first junction is junction 13, a continuation of the M74's junction numbers. So it should be the M74, right? But it isn't. There's also the possibility that it might be the M6, but it isn't. So why do we have the A74M? Well, I'm not entirely sure. The general rule of road numbering is that when you upgrade an A-Row to a motorway, it keeps its A-Row designation, but with an M at the end. So in this case, the A74 became the A74M. The problem is, is they don't apply those rules in Scotland. In reality, there's no reason why you couldn't number the A74M as a continuation of the M74, but for some reason, they've just decided not to do that. The majority of the A74M was built along a new alignment with the A74 running alongside. Under English road numbering rules, because the motorway was built on a new alignment, it would probably get a proper M designation and be called the M74. But we're not in England, we're in Scotland, of course, and the rules here are slightly different. Motorways take their numbers generally from whatever A road they're relieving. And in this case, the A74M. And it sort of makes sense, but I just don't see why it wasn't all part of the M74. It turns out there may be an underlying factor that we've not considered, but we'll come to that later. Let's get things started, and we begin at junction 13. Over the course of the 90s, the A74M was constructed to replace the aging A74. And it would be in 1993 that the section between junctions 13 and 14 would open. Junction 14's annoying. Its slip roads are near enough three miles apart, meaning I have to make two stops to film one location, which of course is not very time efficient. But why do we have this annoyance? Effort oh, fuck. It might be because Junction 14 is split over two sections of A74M that were opened at different times. The southern end of the junction opened in 1992 as a short motorway section that ran down to Paddy's Rickle Bridge where they'd set up a temporary junction whilst the rest of the A74M was built. The northern end of the junction and its slip roads would come later in 1993 to connect it all up as one continuous motorway and it seems they decided to number the collection of slip roads as Junction 14. Not long after leaving Junction 14 and there's a DVSA checkpoint to be found on the southbound carriageway. This is not interesting, but what is interesting is one particular road sign that's situated here because it might answer the question we asked earlier as to why the A74M is numbered that and not as a continuation of the M74. As you leave the checkpoint to rejoin the motorway, there's a sign that says M6 South. M6, not M74 or A74M. So it's the M6 then? Well, yes and no. It turns out that at some point in the history of the M74 and the A74M, it was planned to be all part of the M6. That would have given us a motorway running all the way from Coventry up to Glasgow. I mean, we've still got that, it's just made up of three different motorways. So why isn't it the M6 then? Well, we have to consider that at the time of the A74M's construction, the M6 was also under construction. Meaning between the end of the A74M at Junction 22 and Carlisle, there was a missing link, which was sort of critical to the mission. Of course, this motorway link was under construction, but in England, so it was taking ages. Meanwhile, in Scotland, they'd sort of finished, so we're enjoying a nice cup of whiskey with some shortbread awaiting this new motorway connection. Once this motorway link was completed, it could all be connected up and opened as the M6. Hooray! But we longed it out too much, and understandably, the Scottish office and transport departments got bored of waiting, so they opened the road as the A74M, abandoning the M6 idea altogether. Back to our road sign, and we can see why this mistake exists. Along with others, it was installed at a time when the M6 was still the plan. With the M6 idea abandoned in Scotland, it was easier to leave the road signs in place. And in many cases, any mention of the M6 has been covered up with a plate saying the A74M. But here at the DVSA checkpoint, it's obvious they miss one out. Moving on, and it isn't long before the motorway passes over the Beatux summit, the highest point for any motorway in Scotland at 1,033 feet above sea level. It's the sort of place that would be ideal to install a wind farm. Oh, you did. This is Clyde Wind Farm, an unmissable sight from the A74M, and it's an impressive collection of 150 wind turbines. The site was built over three years, between 2009 and 2012. But that wasn't enough, and the site was extended later, adding a further 50 turbines, taking the total up to 206. The wind turbines are split between a north and south site, but between them generate 522 megawatts of electricity. The drive between junctions 14 and 15 is a long one at around 15 miles. It's the longest gap between junctions to be found anywhere on the Scottish motorway network and it takes you through some rather lovely countryside where not a lot happens. Junction 15 was the last junction on the A74M to see any upgrade work where in 1999 it was rebuilt completely. 
It used to be part of the A74 dual carriageway, and what's interesting is that the motorway junction is effectively a scaled up version of the junction that was there before the motorway came along. Also before the motorway, we'd have found a railway line that ran under the A74 between Beatick and Moffat. This mile and a half branch line opened in 1883, and with no intermediate stations, it was effectively a shuttle service between Beatick and Moffat. The line was closed in 1964 for reasons unknown, but there are a few reminders of the railway still in place today. In particular, this bridge that would have carried the railway over Evan Water just by Beatick Station. You'll find the bridge just by Junction 15 hiding in the trees. Between Junction 16 and 17 is a gate that allows access between the A74M and the B7076 that runs alongside. It's quite literally just a gate. There are no signs, no slip roads, nothing. So why is it here? I don't know. Just opposite the gate and next to the A74M is Stevens Croft Power Station, a wood-fired power station that opened in 2008. It mostly burns the waste products from timber production, and what do you know, right next door there's a massive sawmill, which I imagine produces quite a lot of waste. It could scarcely be better. The sawmill has been chopping down trees since the 1960s, and if you own a garden shed or a wooden fence, there's a very good chance it started out here. Between Junction 17 and 18 is where we find Lockerbie a small, unassuming town with a population of around 4,000. And if it wasn't for events of December 1988, we probably would have never heard of it. I was driving up the road in the, in the car and, uh, you know, I heard this horrible sound. It was like a rushing and a screaming noise and the whole sky just lit up. Just huge, vast, enormous red glow. Just lit up everywhere. On the 21st of December 1988, Pan Am Flight 103 would leave London Heathrow on its way to New York as part of a larger flight from Frankfurt to Detroit. After around 40 minutes of flight time, the aircraft was flying over Lockerbie at 31,000 feet when all of a sudden a bomb detonated on board. Of course, the aircraft split into pieces and disintegrated mid-air and came crashing down on the town of Lockerbie, along with 91 tonnes of aviation fuel which ignited on impact. The main bulk of the fuselage and the wings landed on Sherwood Crescent, where you no longer find the houses 11, 13 and 15, and instead a memorial garden dedicated to all of those involved. Unfortunately, it wasn't just the passengers on board that suffered. At the time, the A74M wasn't a thing, and instead, the A74 dual carriageway would have gone right past Sherwood Crescent. Following the incident, parts of the carriageway had to be rebuilt and repaired due to the damage caused. Flaming wreckage engulfed five vehicles on the A74 in the town. This is the A74, the main Carlisle trunk road. It's collided here, and there's about tons and tons of debris blocking the road and even cars strewn across it. The memorial garden aside, today you'd never know of the horrific scenes that once unfolded here at Lockerbie, but I'm sure it's fair to say that the residents are very unlikely to ever forget. Just up from Junction 18 and the motorway crosses over the water of milk. It's a river. That's about it. Its most notable feature is that it doesn't pass through or connect anything of significance. And don't ask me about the name, I've no idea, but I do read you find good salmon and trout in the water of milk. Anyway, the actual point of coming here was to look at the bridge that runs alongside the A74M. It's that old A74 again, and the bridge gives away the fact that it used to be a dual carriageway, as we can see the remains of this on top of the bridge. I'm pretty sure the entire A74 was a dual carriageway at one point, but when the A74M came along, it was downgraded to single lane running and some of the carriageway removed. Interestingly, not far from here are the leftovers of an even older A74. Before it was upgraded to a dual carriageway, the A74 would have followed this route, but clearly they needed a little bit more space, so realigned the road a short distance away. What that means though is technically in this small area we've got three versions of the A74. We've got the original A74, we've got the dual carriageway A74 and now of course the A74M. Just up from there and we find another single gated entrance to the A74M. I've had a think and the best I can come up with is that they must have been used for access during construction of the A74M. Otherwise yeah it's just a gate. Seems I'm not the only one out today filming the motorway. Junction 19, keep an eye out. Junction 19 is a little bit odd in the same way as Junction 14, but it's not quite as bad. One of the slip roads for the junction sits around half a mile from the others. The junction's always had this layout since its opening in 1994, and it's most likely due to a load of road realigning that they had to do when constructing the motorway. This section of motorway follows the exact line of the old A74 dual carriageway, but to build the motorway, the bridge at Junction 19 had to be changed, and the B725 was rebuilt and rerouted to the motorway's side, which is what led to the creation of the old slip road half a mile. 
mile away. Junction 20 is a fairly straightforward dumbbell style junction, which is good because it means there's nothing really to explain. Just by the junction lies a road that's now had its connection severed as a result of the construction of the A74M. This now abandoned road used to lead up to a crossroad where it would have joined the original A74, and this is the A74 before it became a dual carriageway. When the A74 was upgraded to a dual carriageway, it was actually built on a new alignment a short distance from here, and if we take a look over at the B7076, we can see the remains of some slip roads that would have been a junction for the A74 dual carriageway. And that's now all been removed because of the A74M. Something they didn't remove is this abandoned bridge that you'll find between the slip roads of Junction 21. I say between because it's another junction that's been split apart over a short distance. And what's interesting is that the slip roads connect to two completely different roads depending on your direction of motorway travel. The bridge is much like before where it's a leftover of the old A74 dual carriageway, but in this case the bridge has just been left behind following the construction of the A74M. Just before Junction 2, which, spoiler alert, is a very silly junction indeed, we find Gretna Green Services. It's the first service station that welcomes you into Scotland from England, and it's a little bit interesting because it creates an unofficial motorway junction. You can leave or join the motorway in any direction as a result of a small road link to the B7076, and it's totally legit. Junction 22 then. As promised, it's a little bit stupid. I imagine they made the best of a bad situation. You've got a slip road here, another here, and of course the A75 linking up with the A74M. A short distance up from Junction 22 is Junction 45 of the M6, and this is where you'll find the end of the A74M. At this junction, you'll find a set of slip roads that are no longer open to the public. Originally, you would have been able to make use of the north-facing slip roads, and at the time, it made sense because the A74 terminated here. There was no M6 connection, at least not to begin with. From here, you'd pick up the A74, which would connect up with the M6 further south. This wouldn't change until 2008, and it's odd to think that for quite a while there was this section of A74 that was completely messing up the motorway connection between Scotland and England. Although it's totally our fault, sorry about that all Bean. There's been a lot of requests from the residents of Gretna to see these slip roads reopened, and following conversations with Scottish Parliament, it's been noted that the junction sits in England, so it'd be down to the National Highways of England to reinstate the junction. So that's never going to happen, is it? And there we are then, guys. That's all we've got time for this week. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, there is, of course, a button specifically for that. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. That would be wicked sweet awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John. You've been watching Also Shenanigans, and I'll see you guys next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.